Hello, this is Christy Patton Lukes, a chemical engineering professor at Missouri S&T. In this lecture, we're going to take our first look at spinodal and binodal points. Our goal is that you'll understand how being stable or unstable or metastable ties into these binodal and spino spinodal points, and that is misspelled. Sorry about that. So let's just think about if you took a pot of water and you heated it to 100 degrees C, okay? Now it's not going to start boiling at exactly 100 degrees C unless you have a nucleation site, something to start the boiling. Frequently in labs, we'll throw boiling chips in to help start this off. When the temperature increases a little bit above 100, you're in what is called a metastable region. Now, if you continue heating, eventually you will have spontaneous nucleation occur, and that's going to be at the limit of stability. Now, if you do this the opposite direction, you vaporize the water and try cooling it, you're going to end up going slightly below 100 degrees before you actually see water droplets form. This is also a limit of stability. The limits of stability are what are called spinodal points. What we think of as the coexistence curves, where we actually have stability, these are called the binodal points. The critical state is, we usually think of where the liquid and vapor phases come together and have common properties. But really what this point is mathematically is the limit of stability where the binodal and the spinodal points merge together. So very briefly, we're going to look at a couple of graphs. We'll first look at for just a simple binary mixture. And in a binary mixture, what I'm going to see is that I'm going to have regions where I have my stability limits, okay? What I would have called my two-phase region. And for this space in here, I would normally have said this is going to split into two phases. But observation tells us that there's actually a small region near these borders that is metastable. And in these regions, I actually can observe single phase systems for a region in here. And the part that still remains yellow, this is definitely going to always split into two phases. The two phases will have compositions determined by tie lines across our region here, our unstable region. But I can have for periods of time things in this metastable region that are going to just simply um, look like they are staying as one phase. This curve along the outside is going to be my binodal line. This is what we typically think of as our two-phase split. This curve that separates out this metastable and unstable region, this is our spinodal curve. Where these come together is the unique point that is the critical point. This diagram is very similar, but this is for a ternary mixture, so three chemicals together. So we've got a polymer, a solvent, and a non-solvent. Again, I'm going to have regions where definitely, if I have a mixture in this region, it will spontaneously divide into two phases, okay? This is clearly unstable. But when I have regions, or I have a point that falls into these regions here near the binodal curve, I'm going to find that I am metastable, where it may, depending on whether or not there's a nucleation site to force the phase change, it may actually still look like it's a one-phase system. But if I leave it long enough, perturb it slightly, 
I will get it so that it will come finally and take shape of being that two-phase region that we expect with the split again following some sort of tie line. Where the binodal and spinodal come together is the critical point. And so what we're going to be wanting to analyze next in our class on Monday will be what happens in this region here and mathematically can I predict these? Thank you for your time.